Hello and welcome to this week's PV Newscast. Coming up, German feed-in tariff rates set for 2012, the Middle East could be the next emerging market, and proposals to slash the UK feed-in tariff feel the heat. Germany's Federal Network Agency has officially announced that it will cut the country's solar feed-in tariff by 15% in 2012. The subsidy reduction is more severe than the 12% forecast by many industry leaders and was triggered by the 5.2 gigawatts of new capacity installed between October 2010 and September 2011. Operators will receive between 17.94 euro cents and 24.43 euro cents per kilowatt hour fed into the network for PV installations which commence operation from January the 1st next year. Between July and September, 1.6 gigawatt of PV was installed in Germany, just 100 megawatts shy of the corresponding year-on-year -year number. However, forecasts indicate that 2011 installations are expected to be in the range of 5 gigawatt. Solar power is poised to become an important part of the Middle East's energy mix over the next decade, according to a leading expert on solar within the Gulf Cooperation Council. Dr. Khaled Khalif Al-Hajri, Qatar Solar Technologies CEO, made the claim at a recent GCC France Economic Forum and believes that to maximise the potential of this solar boom, the region needs to facilitate an influx of skilled PV professionals. In related news, work will begin next year on the first phase of the 500 megawatt Desert Tech-supported concentrated solar power plant in Morocco, the initial development stage will cost around 600 million euros and add 150 megawatt of capacity to the yet-to-be-named site. Total investment in the Desertec Industrial Initiative, which is a joint venture between 12 predominantly German developers, is estimated at 2 billion euros and it could come online as early as 2014. Despite many difficulties in the PV industry this year, one of the leading market research firms says they believe installations will beat last year's record levels. IMS Research have also said they are optimistic about 2012. We came up with quite an optimistic, aggressive forecast about 18 months ago, which was suggesting 300 megawatts would be installed this year. And uh, even that over a year and a half ago, looked people kind of shot us down a little bit and that was undercalling the market basically. We think there could be uh, close to 600 megawatts being done this year, which in context is, is, is huge compared to what I did last year, 45 megawatts done last year. Um, so one of the fastest growing markets in the world. This year's Solar Power UK event was at least five times larger than last year's, with more than 3,000 attendees. For many, it was the first chance to attend an event that brought all sides of the industry together, and it proved to be a very productive few days. Oh yes, I think it's fantastic. I think for about for, for years we've been going to uh, events like this in all, all across Europe, and it's just fantastic to be able to exhibit to actually be an exhibitor rather than a visitor at, at, at uh, a show like this in our own country. The feedback has been amazing. It's been a very positive uh, vibe in, in the air. Uh, although there are uncertainties in this industry, uh, the outlook is still positive. People are still looking at the future and they're looking at the long-term sustainable um, future for solar in the UK. We didn't know how it would come out, yeah, the result. And we came here and we thought it's maybe small, but the fact is that it is full of installers who are very eager to learn and very eager to know about photovoltaic and really go forward and learn and come and talk and chat. And it's really, really good for us. We've just started installing solar panels. Um, we we're going through MCS registration. We just wanted to really get a feel for what's out there in the marketplace, other suppliers, distributors. Uh, manufacturers and that sort of thing so just getting an idea of what's out there as well as you know you can only learn so much from the internet and what you hear around get out there and see what's there's been a like an educational trip as yeah, much as yeah. you know, a business yeah. trip didn't realize there's so much in it <laughs> there's so many suppliers and so many manufacturers and you know so uh, there's, there's quite a lot to deal with but not not only in this country as well you know it's all over it's good but uh... Yeah, it's, it's a growing business, so hopefully it will get better. I mean, we've invested a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort, 
So hopefully, yeah, we'll, we'll reap the rewards in the future. Uh, I've attended last year's solar power event, uh, which was already a quality event, very, very, very interesting. So we decided to attend this year again. And uh, no, I mean, the, the, it reflects the growth of the industry, no doubt, absolutely. Our take is this has been a very successful event. Um, it is a very young event. You can see it from the, the, you know, the, the, the booth size compared to a large uh, worldwide uh, show such as you have in Germany. Uh, but it's a very good show. Uh, I think the quality of the people here, the, both the people exposed as well as the customers and potential prospects that come, is very good. The quality of the speakers is fabulous. We had uh, today Greg Barker coming over, which I think was a tremendous uh, help in terms of trying to see where the market is going. So overall, I'm very pleased with this event. UK government plans to slash the feed-in tariff by more than 50% have received widespread condemnation. And they're now feeling the heat over figures that show 9 out of 10 households would have to spend more than £5,000 to bring homes up to energy-efficient standards before they could be eligible for solar panel subsidies. According to the Labour Party Shadow Energy Minister Caroline Flint's office, 86% of the UK's homes do not meet the C energy rating standards that properties will need to qualify for the feed-in tariff. Pressure from the UK PV industry to change the proposed new legislation is now underway. Last week, Greg Barker, Minister for the Department of Energy and Climate Change, spoke to a packed audience of solar industry delegates at the Solar Power UK conference, where he explained the reasons behind the cuts. I'm personally committed to ensuring that your industry can prosper for the long term, sustaining green jobs at a critical time for our economy, jobs that people can build a career on, jobs that can help drive the recovery and show that Britain can lead the way in low carbon innovation and small scale renewables. Yes, that does mean that there are some tough choices to make. I know that many of your businesses depend on the FITS level for your success, at least in the short term. But we simply cannot escape reality. We are living in a different world from the one in which the FITS scheme was planned and even launched. In particular, we must work much harder to provide and show value for money to bill payers. I can't preside over a scheme which allows a solar panel installation in some of the least sunny locations of Britain to generate returns of 12% or more, and in many places, a lot higher than that. Being sensible with tariffs will mean that there's more money to go around. Taking this action now will mean that we can spread the money more widely and, last, and therefore allow more people to benefit from solar technology. In the long term, this must mean more customers for your companies. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks again for watching. Next time, we'll be giving you the reaction following some major financial announcements as we hear the first of the third quarter updates.